Hello and welcome on our video lesson. And today we will talk about the canine behavior and uh, when I thought about what kind of animals to start with, I just remembered that dogs have been with humanity for more than 10,000 years and this relationship is really amazing. So that's um, why I take uh, this kind of animals for first uh, our practical in uh, all kinds of uh, animal behavior and but I, I knew an Alice new analysis of modern dog uh, wolf and holding uh, shackle uh, genomes such as that dogs and wolves uh, evolved from common and so, so between uh, 11 to 16 thousand years ago uh, an average from 9,000 uh, and 34,000 years ago with mutation and uh, the study also shows that dogs are more closely related to each other than wolves and regardless of geographic or origin and dog domestication is more complex than uh, we originally thought about this and of course dogs have been domesticated and have been selected uh, to remain behaviorally immature compared to wolves this uh, 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 retrogression of development uh, is called neoteny and uh, the resulting uh, retention of um, uh, juvenile characteristic by adult animals is called uh, pedomorphism uh, and pedomorphosis and neoteny accounts for many of the pronounced behavioral differences between dogs and wolves and dogs show many behavioral uh, typical for wolf pupils even in uh, adulthood uh, they remain playful uh, enjoy uh, physical contact are hardly social and uh, are very f uh, uh, often bark uh, paw and nozzle and some breeds are more highly neotenized and uh, show more of the uh, behavioral characteristic of wolf pupils than other and uh, of course uh, we know some characteristic of many sounds surprising but the first stage of domestication uh, were probably initiated by the wolves themselves even uh, it's just uh, the only wolves that could benefit from uh, discarded food were those that could uh, comfortably uh, uh, be with humans of a particular wolf has aggressive or just uh, treated in, uh, just was simply killed by the human residents as a matter of safety. And this process began a kind of human and forced natural selection. And the genetic elimination of the most uh, destructive individuals just uh, in this case animals that were friendlier and less fearful could stay closer to the excitement uh, and additional to the free mm, meals uh, the close approximately to humans provided them protection from the predators that prefer to avoid human contact and uh, when these friend like canis began to interbreed they uh, uh, ultimately generated a race of animals that were much more dog like in this case here with this uh, adult wolf's head even we have very very funny uh, heads for uh, modern uh, dogs and always it's more neoteny uh, or like popular like uh, uh, face or heads a domesticated animals however is actually genetically modified human expect control 
over its breeding patterns, uh, which lead to an animal uh, that's different in both uh, in uh, appearance and a th a psychological behavioral and behavioral that uh, than its uh, viewed ancestors. Sectors and um, through that, the domestication process accomplished uh, was to arrest dog development in a very uh, popular like state. In uh, essence, domestic dogs are the Peter Pan's in the canine world. Uh, it's neotiny refers to certain. Uh, normally found uh, feature only in uh, infants and young juveniles, uh, but which in certain animals uh, persist uh, into adulthood. In uh, this uh, table, you can see that many uh, psychological features of an adult domestic dog resemble those of a wolf puppy more than those in an adult wolf. And come on, uh, uh, physical uh, differences between wolves and dogs come about because of neotenin. Uh, as you move down, uh, there you move further away from adult characteristic and toward more pupil like uh, further as it's uh, um, here this is uh, common not on easily change fear of strangers for example in evolves and usually friendly behavioral in dogs and here was this display behavioral is very important uh, in evolves only in the childhood but uh, almost all life of uh, dogs and barking, barking come on in many seats for dogs, but uh, only in wearing or surprise in a wolf and more and more. Uh, and uh, here we see this uh, a new slides about genetic uh, uh, which wild canines became dogs and more three different spices of wild canines are candidates for first animals that humans domesticated into a dog but which spices did humans actually take into their homes and make their closed animal uh, companion and the DNA evidence suggests that the first wheel canin that was domesticated was a grey wolf and however the types of wolves uh, and also Chekals, coyotes, and wheel dogs, uh, and uh, dingo dogs, and even some varieties of fox got into the mix as well. Uh, as a result, only one dog may have a combination of genes from all these varying members of the canine family. And researchers now that this fact because domestic dogs can interbreed with any of the spices. Uh, the exception been some of the common uh, fox spices uh, such as the red fox which have the wrong number of chromosomes and, and the offspring from such mating uh, um, are live healthy and uh, it's usually take as evidence that they are all the same spices or according to evolutionary theory at least have a relatively recent common access and this research suggests that the dog at your site may be some random mix of genes uh, descended from perhaps 40% wolf, 30% shackle and 30% coyote and uh, sometimes why uh, while another breed may be 16% wolf and uh, different. Uh, even a dingo dog, no wonder so many different breeds have so many different uh, 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 behavioral styles and uh, personalities and here is this uh, genetical, uh, just a thousand years ago, genetical uh, uh, transformation. And here one more gen is very important uh, as the researchers also found differences across dog breeds and wolves in a number of animals 
analysis of uh, just a ferment or enzyme and it is the gene uh, that ha digests starch uh, in small intestine and Russian studies have suggested that this gene was uh, critical to domestication allowing the early dogs uh, living near humans to adapt to an uh, agricultural diet uh, but the synthesis uh, survived uh, genetic date from the uh, uh, 12 additional dog breeds and so that m while most dog breeds had high numbers of analyzed genes and those not associated with the uh, agrarian uh, societies uh, like the Siberian Husky have this a very low rate uh, prefer only meat diet and for example like in a Dinho Australian dog and he was this uh, very high level of this uh, enzyme uh, inside of a cell uh, inside a small intestine uh, like in this uh, trazy dog uh, one of these that is especially significant at this gene coding for pancreatic MLS for pancreatic animals and for small intestine animals uh, from the um, cells of small intestine it's very important and if you want to know more i just leave you uh, this links to the article so what we, we have in general we have what's the, the gen pool inside and here is another site where i learned a lot about the biology of the dogs it's very interesting i will leave the link too and here is what what we do we have now seven major dog breed group and uh, you saw this slide before and here was this is all these breeds working dog and hound dogs and toy dogs and terrier and sporting dogs and non-sporting dogs and uh, just herding dogs and of course the slides that uh, you know where you can find uh, find the dog for yourself and um, it's kingdoms uh, uh, were massive dog breeds were shaped by a process of manual selection to guard castles and edwards and this selection process was continued thousand uh, years and today we have then uh, more than 400 different dog breeds all developed for particular task and that have special talents to really consider life from your dog's uh, perspective, uh, perspective, you need a, a new nose. nose. Dogs uh, really most heavily on their sense of smell to interpret even the most mirror aspects of their surroundings, such as when uh, another animal may have passed through or even the stress hormone of a visitor in your home and of course the dogs uh, uh, feel it and in most mammals including dogs there are two main parts of the olfactory system the main olfactory epithelium uh, and additional uh, veronasal organ and uh, this part of uh, epithelium here we this uh, in the nose, um, it's uh, just uh, located in the usually pigmental part of the mucosa in the caudodorsal region of the nasal cavity, and the veronasal organ lines between the nasal and oral cavity near the vomer bo uh, bone, just above the roof of the mouth, and uh, the nasal palatine duct and, uh, which starts behind the upper incisor in the plate and connect the mouth with the vasonosal organ which uh, is a tabular and uh, separated by the nasal septum. During sniffing the inherent and the dog's nostril separates in two district pathways and the upper flow pass approximately 
and 12 percent of each breeze goes straight to the olfactory region the outer molecules are deposited and accumulated and prevented them from being exhaled and the remainder of the air in the lower pathway flows down the uh, pharynx into the lungs and this pass uh, is also used for exhalation the uh, supporting prolonged exposure of inspired air to the hemoreceptor area of the olfactory epithelium as air flows through the olfactory area of the dog during expectation and uh, turbulence in nasal airflow is a consequence of anatomical and physiological factors and these factors influence uh, vomiting and just temperature and the pass of the inspired air uh, and guarding uh, a por uh, portion of the air towards the olfactory epithelium and in dogs as uh, in other species like in the humans the mechanism of nasal air airflow patterns during inhalation allows the uh, separator door samples in each nostril allowing bilateral uh, comparison of stimulus intensity door source localization and here is this is um, dogs have a strong right nostril bs on the right side as it's the nostril through which they first start and uh, then if the smell turns out to be a familiar or no ever the door such as food they shift to using the left nostril and it's very interesting that in a human the same however if the stimuli turn out to be novel or arousing such as adrenaline and the dog continues to use only the right nostril and these finds are constant uh, with the theory revealed by uh, 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 that the right hemisphere controls novel information processing with the left hemisphere then taking chain charge of behavioral response for familiar stimulus in the right hemisphere maintain dominance over the sympathetic uh, and hypothalamic uh, pituitary adrenal axis. Uh, behavioral uh, lateralization directly reflects asymmetric in the brain function. You know this uh, function asymmetric in uh, uh, each hemisphere in the brain. And internal and uh, uh, environmental factors influencing of lactose skills. I just take this picture from this article. Uh, if you want uh, more information, just visit the link. Uh, this link, if you want. Sometimes we are really go to extreme use. Uh, Outer shell selection. I am not talking about sphinx cat, you know, this it's uh, extremely, uh, but in this case, the same. You see this face, face, uh, and the shape of the head for uh, some dogs. Uh, I'm talking about bruising problems and flat face dogs. If you are uh, the owner of such a dog you should pay attention to its anatomy and uh, what to do with it uh, very often we have the big problem in these dogs with the breathing it first looks like uh, airflow blockage and so um, narrow it nostrils and hypertrophy nasal turbulence it's uh, it just uh, just stopped breathing normally breathing and you, if you your dog has a sense of sight and human strongest sense in uh, and limited to your your dog only can uh, uh, recognize a, a limited range of colors and it's more attitude to the motion and object uh, we start to talk about uh, vision uh, but uh, then we uh, uh, return to the test, but at first 
about region can in sensory capacities about region uh, he was and it's more attitude to the motion of the object and then it's particular so do, don't um, rely on the uh, recognition uh, of fine details of object and uh, rather they were born to be hunters with the motor if it moves it might be food and uh, i will t t catch it and just eat uh, so uh, if we just uh, see more field uh, the dogs have in general more field but uh, fox that uh, in a very small area uh, something like um, Okay, well, this is a total visual field in uh, uh, rabbits. Uh, they uh, even can see something uh, behind the back, its back, but uh, don't see a very good distance to the object. They just uh, see something moving and run away because it is a danger. Uh, but uh, for hunters, this is uh, very important to have the vision, binocular vision, uh, and very good binocular vision. And have this is, uh, and one more, our dogs have much better vision in a uh, night time uh, without uh, light than people, and this is due to a reflective line, tapetum on the inner side of the. Uh, eye bulb located behind the retina that uh, reflects light back to hit the retina and the second time uh, he has this uh, process retina and tapetum and just um, uh, reflect uh, light back and it's help to and of course the colors colors not the same like in humans uh, just uh, dogs have the capacity to see color and particularly in a blue violet uh, uh, area and the yellow green ranges however the retina con contains relatively few color sensitive cones uh, they also have few color comparing neurons and humans uh, it has therefore been suggested that also dogs are capable of seeing color it may not be important to them not so much important like in like for humans and here was this is uh, this electromagnetic spectrum and here is this visual 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 light and we will talk about the um, hearing function but it feels me uh, a return to the taste and touch dogs uh, perception to test appears to the similar to the uh, that in humans they are particularly sensitive to sweets and are very fond to cheese cream and butter the sense of taste uh, is already functional uh, is already functional at the, after the birth and uh, aside from tests and uh, uh, palatably is la uh, largely based on the smell, temperature and texture. A dog sense of taste is much less uh, than uh, that in humans. In fact, while humans have uh, uh, about uh, 9000 test bulbs, dogs have only uh, um, uh, about 2000 and this means they since a test uh, is about one six as powerful of our powerful um, as ours that uh, said it doesn't mean that dogs don't test anything at all and uh, they actually have some unique uh, features that humans don't share studies have uh, uh, shown that dogs have the same four test classifications that humans uh, meeting they can identify sweet uh, so salt and bitter and however dogs also have special tests about the uh, read uh, specifically for water and cats and other carnivores have these test bulbs but they aren't found in humans uh, and uh, they are found 
at the tip of the tongue, the weight cards cause uh, uh, as the animal blocks water and also it re <coughs> react to water at all times. It's more sensitive after eating salty and sugar food, sweet food. And theory behind this is that when in the wild animals might need more water after eating certain foods that may dehydrate them. And this is likely because the acceptors diet consisted to um, rightly 80% meat in the wild and meat is a very salty food because of uh, sodium. Uh, also, a uh, dog's ability to taste is a uh, right uh, fraction of the human sense. Okay, uh, we move on the heroin. Oh, touch, touch, oh, because the skin uh, has receptors to sense touch, pressure, pain, and body movement, and position, and temperature, and vibration. You know, if you want to know more, you just move in our. A uh, lesson of physiology, it's uh, sensitive physiology, and here this is vibrous um, grows uh, on the head, on the, uh, it can be just on the uh, 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 cranial part of the uh, body, and uh, long, firm, stroked from head to uh, calm and reduce head rate and early stress in both the dog and the person Petting the dog, and even <coughs> uh, we talked about this in the cats, it's very important for cats. And move on the herring, and here with this, the dog's herring rage uh, is much greater than uh, that uh, of uh, humans. Here with this human rage and dog rage, and uh, however, herring is the best at around 40,000 hertz. At is well in the uh, audible range for humans. Dogs may therefore not hear ultrasonic dogs uh, and very well. Dogs can localize uh, the source of uh, noise by moving their pen and like humans they can also derive the direction from the which a sound is coming from the time difference between the left and the right ear a sound and dogs who have erect poetry ears are noted to be able to hear slightly better than dogs with large hairy floop ears. And hearing is a dog's secondary sense uh, and not so important like a smell is said to be the most important sense to a dog. But hearing comes in the second oversight test and touch. And here was this uh, the building of this uh, inside the dog ear, uh, exactly what we have. It is outer ear, and you know we have the middle ear and uh, inner ear. And in general, how this uh, senses uh, the the dog uses senses for communication. Uh, uh, we move on just on the slide with the dog communication uh, with visual, auditory, and olfactory cues. For humans, the uh, visual cues uh, are usually the most uh, useful, uh, and the olfactory cues are in the uh, least seven. Visual communication, uh, let's start from the uh, this humans are mostly visual species, therefore the body language of dogs is particularly important for us to interpret a dog's intention uh, or emotions and different postures may indicate social status, aggression, embarrassment or fear or conflict and dogs are very expressive animals. They communicate when they are feeling happy, sad and even nervous angry and they use their faces and their bodies to convey much of this emotion uh, and you learn how to read and uh, uh, this emotion and dog postures and signals you will better understand in uh, understand he, his feelings and motivation and be better able to predict uh, what uh, it like to do 
and at first body postures tape color dog carrying its body weight forward here we see this uh, position with picked uh, or erect ears and an element tail uh, reflected dog that is uh, attentive and uh, interested uh, in environmental stimuli the dog's uh, emotional state may be uh, here uh, and treat and this alert body stance may result in a variety of outcomes including aggression and play uh, it is uh, as uh, if the dog is uh, centering the stimulation and deciding uh, on how to proceed and here was this is a website uh, where you take information um, uh, start from the just emotion and here was this is one one emotion and we are starting to study communication in a dog from that uh, your dog can within limits where is the shape and uh, size of uh, his eyes or the direction and intensity of his gaze and when you your dog is relaxed and happy the size will be their normal shape some dogs have their round eyes uh, uh, while other are more amount shaped eyes and Eyes that appear larger than normal usually indicate that a dog is feeling treatness in some way. He may be stressed by something or they may be uh, fighting it. Uh, an aggressive dog is um, also like to have eyes that look larger than normal. And we will talk about this uh, uh, later. If you dog's eyes seem smaller than they usually have, uh, this can also mean this feeling threatened or stressed dogs who are in pain or not feeling well often look as through their uh, uh, squinting the eyes dogs who submissively will green may also squint their eyes and it's very important to find the direction of your dog's uh, uh, gaze can also be telling dogs rarely look directly into each other eyes because this is a considered uh, like a, a harassing behavioral treatment and but most dogs uh, learn that uh, it's okay even pleasant to look directly at people but it's special contact a dog who looks at you with a relaxed face, his expression is being friendly and hoping that you will notice him. And a dog who looks directly at you, actually starting at your with a tense facial expression, is uh, another matter indeed. A direct stare is much more likely to be a treatment if you are in close proximity to such a dog. It's uh, wise uh, to slowly look away and looking away is that dogs do when they don't want to appear treated. A dog who avers his gaze when you look at him is signaling that he is submissively. Uh, it can also indicate that he is worried about interacting with you and maybe he has been scared of people in the past. And so he isn't very confident about it. And here this is a white color sclera. It's very important and it's uh, it's a signal sometimes if your dog doesn't look directly at you but instead looks out of the corner of the, his eyes so that you see this good deal of the white color and his eyes he might be learning up to an aggressive outburst and know the vile eye even is this you know this is often seen when a dog is uh, guarding something for example toy bone uh, it's different uh, that dif uh, different that the eye of a dog who for instance is resting with his head and opens his eyes to give you a sideways glance in this case, he won't appear rigid or tense, and you won't see, uh, won't see 
much of the whites of his eyes. It's uh, just uh, be careful with this. The mouth, it is a uh, very important organ. Dogs do a lot more with their mouth than just eat and drink, even thought. They can't use their mouth to talk and to way they position their, their lips, jaws and teeth speaks volumes. And the, uh, when your dog is relaxed, and happy, uh, just it likely to have his mouth closed or slightly opened. If his mouth is opened, he may be painting, and this is how dogs cool their bodies. Uh, you might see uh, his teeth because his mouth is slightly opened, and sometimes it just lingo uh, move out. A dog who friend or feeling submissive probably uh, has his mouth closed. His lips might be pulled back uh, and mm, uh, he might uh, flick his tongue in uh, and out or the might lick if he's interacting with a person or another animal and uh, uh, it can be on in the mm, special fashion. Some dogs show a submissive green uh, when they are feeling extremely submissive and uh, here this is uh, moving and yawn and even this face like with a canine and scissors uh, just uh, take up uh, lips and this special face uh, not angry but uh, uh, I don't want to be with you close as in you are. Look at the position of the ears. One more very important position uh, in mimics of the dogs. The dogs who signal in his uh, act aggressive will often retract his lips and move the uh, ears to the back. Uh, and uh, it's uh, uh, close to this incisor uh, and lip uh, up, up lip and uh, show the incisors. And here is a slide. Uh, the position of the ears is often not taken into account. And while it is very important, here is an example from the last lesson. Plain behavior is often uh, accompanied by a demonstration of the teeth, and this looks like a treat. But the position of the uh, uh, out uh, part of the air as a rule does not ch uh, change they are direct uh, forward and if they are pressed uh, then uh, on the temporary but if the air is constantly pressed to the head uh, then this is a protection from injury if the dog uh, uh, in a fight and uh, uh, in an aggressive state, uh, this part of the air will be uh, close to the head. And uh, one more about uh, this very important organ uh, and position of this part. Um, dogs have the wide variety of the air types. Of course, not all types can give information. And here this is one more very different. Here this is this kind and even rows airs and folded airs and flipped airs. And here this is, um, I, I, I give the fact in this outer part of the air in dogs is very sensitive. It's easy to bite uh, a, on it and the dogs know this. It's very sensitive and some, sometimes if uh, the dogs in a fight uh, just beat it and damage and turn and injurious air sometimes just turn off airs and just just eat part of the air here. This is Bruno used to leave uh, the part of the air in his uh, toy just one time uh, it, his ear was torn off when the another dog attacked uh, him. And uh, the dogs always just uh, reflective, uh, uh, 
just move the airs uh, close to the head. This is the main cause of auricular cropping and dogs, especially in some breeds. Uh, we need to just uh, move out this part of the air uh, for protection. And I want uh, you to know that it's not just cosmetic surgery uh, or breed standard um, like uh, aesthetic sometimes it's um, just for some uh, dogs it's must to be because in here this is uh, this turkish bungalow it's special uh, work uh, dog uh, it's guard uh, guardian dog uh, like a bodyguard a sheep uh, guard it's done to prevent them from being torn by wolves and other predators Toners uh, could very easily become infected and uh, like this spike to, uh, around his neck, it's, uh, it's protection from the wolves because its wolves are formidable opponents. In general, this uh, breeds of dogs very, uh, very like this uh, difficult dog to handle. <laughs> for uh, novice dog owner and many owners drug that, that you will be the first if you get a can go to the recall co uh, consistently and successfully but about airs just say that what the position of the airs can say us as here this is dominance position and uh, in this dog we just see that um, the dog turn down airs and uh, keep closer to the head. The size and shape of dog's airs will do this, uh, how well he can use them to communicate. When your dog is relaxed and comfortable, he will hold his airs naturally. And when he's alert, he's rising higher on uh, his head and uh, he will direct them toward uh, whatever holds his interest and your dog will also raise his uh, ears up and forward then when uh, he's feeling aggressive but in a fight uh, fighting um, it can be close to the head dog tails oh, we, we talk about a lot of parts of dogs but people often assume uh, that a dog with, with a, a, a virgin tails is friendly dog, but it's far from the turn. And dogs uh, wag their tails for numerous reasons, including when they are feeling aggressive too. And uh, a, a dog who isn't wearing uh, his tail can still be friendly, for example, and uh, always in very active state the position always the same and uh, uh, as rule the tail and um, don't move from side to side uh, but uh, stride um, up and uh, one more here this is when your dog is alert or aroused around something he will probably hold his tail higher than normal and dog hair of course here this is uh, part uh, 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 where we can find the pillow erection of special muscles around the uh, hair bulbs and uh, it can just uh, be on the head like in the cats and this uh, spin along the spine and one more in general like this position of the uh, overall body posture uh, you see a lot of different posture i don't uh, use this uh, just text but uh, this uh, alert position surprisingly uh, uh, and feels angry position and like <laughs> this area for relaxed position uh, and uh, sad position let me be us and leave me alone and here was this is putting uh, it all together as a wild dogs it can be happy content and alert content and sometimes exceed uh, and uh, a lot of emotion or also playful behavioral and uh, scared behavioral it can be also 
uh, dominant or submissive behavior. All have this uh, different position of the body of dogs and uh, sometimes aggressive position, of course, and offensively aggressive. And sometimes uh, uh, it helps to auditory communication because it's the first time we said about body position and emotions, but auditory and barking, it's uh, um, dogs may bark when they perceive their territory to be treated as a warning, as a greeting, in a play, behavioral, out excitement, and in a different. And this barking is very different for uh, any breeds uh, and. Uh, uh, if you uh, know your vocalization, vocalization of your dogs, you understand it even. Uh, and um, one more, it's uh, olfactory communication. Um, odors, dogs uh, excrete uh, special odors in skin glands that may be sec uh, serve uh, individual recognition. And they also deposit screws via face, urine, and special anoxac uh, anoxa uh, secretion. And it, it's just genetically um, interpreted as a uh, composition of this secretion uh, change. It's uh, unclear that message if any is covered by this means. And it's very important. And um, we start to talking about a different behavior in animals and here we see this um, conflict behavior uh, and uh, we will talk about uh, different behavior and normal behavior in animals very soon in special practical but in uh, general conflict behavior can be uh, uh, for dogs not like aggressive behavior just like uh, previous um, signals to aggressive uh, behavioral heresies. This conflict is definite as a psychological struggle, often unconscious, uh, resulting from the opposition or uh, stimulating functioning of uh, exclusive impulses desires or tenses and conflict behavior are often shown in stimulation of frustration uh, and or motivation conflict uh, and may or may not have an effect on the receiver uh, and key point in preventing of aggressive situation it is interpret conflict behavior early so your uh, action may be a prayer and just stop to this action and uh, you don't have the aggressive behavior. Uh, at first it can be frustration. Frustration and the dog, if uh, just the dog don't know what to do. Dogs often display signals that appear in the contradict, uh, contradictory. There are many cases of stress, but stress frequently results from the environmental uh, that is unpredictable and does not give the dog any control over events such as pleasant or aversive stimulus and in this uh, conflict behavioral the uh, dog can do some some motion uh, and he uses a scratching and licking uh, and uh, he uses some uh, or some moving or just uh, hyperactive uh, uh, moving from the one side to another and even going around and uh, he uses a spectrum of fear like an exit distance and he uses this, um, from the green relaxed relaxed but yellow moderate sense he uses signals uh, moderate sig signals in a red and it's very import important uh, uh, when the dog is in this state we just don't understand what happened but uh, after that some some owners said oh my dog bite me um, uh, but I don't know why why it's happened but it's not um, it's not in first signal just you lose the first signals of this situation uh, and uh, one more um, this dog have 
associated with human sentiments they have been selected to be good squarenters or they have become here we see this as in people aggression can also be a conflict behavioral in dogs an aggressive outburst is a common human reaction to the stress of having lost control and lost the ability to predict that is going to happen and similar dogs that lose control are frustrated uh, or in a conflict may become aggressive pet owners often be believe that dogs became aggressive without worrying like i said it has a pyramid may assist owners in noticing a potential missed communication with uh, this analogy and becomes clear to owners that dog did not bite without warning but instead the communication was not interpreted clearly in a perfect world all dogs would precisely and uh, routinely follow and their pattern in the figure. Uh, unfortunately, that is not the case. Dogs that were punished for growling may keep directly to beating, biting. When dogs have become confided in using aggression to resolve conflict, they may case to slow obvious conflict behavior. And here this is a uh, uh, lip lift and her own and of course here this is conflict behavioral stuff i am in a conflict here head turn sneezing uh, young uh, lying down turning away and sometimes it's just a uh, white eye we saw so it's very important especially in contact with the children here was this three things are important to keep in mind and first, all this behavioral can also be shown when the dog is not in conflict. For example, because they are just play for something, they each scratching. And this context is uh, always important when interpreting this behavior. The second, also the resulted conflict behavior have become normal social behaviors. They are still also shown when the dog is in conflict. And third, it is important to be aware of the over uh, observe conflict behavioral especially an aggressive, aggressive dog because they indicate some degree of stress may predict uh, imminent aggression and point towards the reason for a behavioral problem and the dog may have and here this is pushing conflict behavioral obviously constraint uh, contradicts them uh, contraindicated behavior of the dogs in general we were talking about all behavioral um, exploratory behavior and uh, a lot of different uh, kind of behavioral uh, we have covered a lot of issues related to communication and now it's time to talk about in general since dogs have associated with humans uh, seat limits uh, they have been selected to be good uh, scavengers uh, while they have become much less uh, proficient and hunting they still have the potential for predatory behavioral and show many of the motor patterns associated with it especially during play predatory behavioral has also been observed when a large group of dogs become highly excited uh, aroused, uh, or aroused. Uh, the extent to which predatory behavioral is developed in a dog depends on its degree of neotenium and predatory behavioral is also influenced by learning dogs will normally not show any predatory behavioral towards passes with which they have been socialized at, uh, at an early age and therefore flock guarding dogs are socialized early uh, with sheep uh, if not socialized um, with humans 
and the justice so sufficiently with humans dogs may show predatory behavior toward people and especially children and fighting dogs are trained to uh, redirect predatory behavior towards their own spices which is highly abnormal and uh, occasionally uh, generalize to other spices as well and they to reduce appetite a dog that is trained uh, with food rewards uh, may refuse the rewards as the first uh, indication of um, anxiety and thus uh, an ability to learn and also a dog that is housed at, uh, at a veterinary hospital or boarding can may have reduced appetite and uh, competition over food increased consumption and uh, palatability is largely based on smell therefore appetite can be improved by monstering uh, moistening uh, uh, and warming up food dogs also general prefer no food uh, and um, uh, here this is uh, investigative behavior or just we talked about this uh, and uh, eliminative behavioral have this is eliminative behavioral includes uh, defecation urination and brain or post uh, eliminative behaviorals like a smelling uh, for location uh, exploring location sucking before elimination for example in the beaches stimulate puppies to urinate and uh, defecate by licking uh, the penile area and ingesting the excrements and puppies begin to eliminate uh, on their own at two three weeks and age uh, of age uh, to each time beach just discount and digesting the excrements if by three weeks and age the puppies being to leave the nest and gradually start to defecate outside the nest and approximately three months of age male begin uh, uh, males learn forward uh, at six months they occasionally lift their leg uh, uh, exactly leg lifting progressive increase in males until two years of age and castration before um, tuberty may uh, delay the outset of leg lifting but most uh, castrated males still develop leg lifting due to the pre uh, of their brain with testosterone while uh, in utero the typical female uh, urination posture is squatting however most all the females lift the leg while squaring it, it can be with urine and this should be considered no but behavioral health is a stimulus that affect elimination some it's very important to rule trump for purpose it's the can a re a refrain from limiting for as many hours as they are months and plus one so it's uh, just if you want to um, uh, just uh, should to do a, a long time to wait for your dogs uh, uh, be careful uh, just it's impossible if uh, your dog is very small sexual behavior uh, most males sexually mature from 9 and uh, 12 months of age and while small breeds many mature sons uh, and grand breeds generally mature later and females are sexually mature first estrus in the six uh, to nine months and also larger breeds uh, first estrus uh, in a later age and uh, just this behavioral is uh, uh, ritualized with great individual variation it may include joint play running and vocalization and special body position and the female become uh, increasingly docile uh, or moving her tail to the side uh, it uh, just catalog a cure uh, after 
penetration in the male turns during the tie uh, and the coital lock persists to 30 minutes and uh, estrus may increase the general activity and, and nervosis and vocalization and in general pregnancy lasts about uh, 63 days and here this is, uh, after that we have this maternal behavioral just uh, pregnancy and the beaches uh, and start to lactate even one week uh, before the give a birth and prepartum and her appetite may be not decreased uh, about two days before but uh, but uh, her breathing and the rest lessons of the beach increase uh, about one day before uh, give birth and uh, temperature drops and nest building uh, behavioral can be and uh, labor scenes include respiration varying from painting to slow and deep respiration decreased activity and uh, agitation um, and during just a part uh, during part duration the beach legs her vulva and express the propane that amnion uh, she uh, then legs uh, through the amnion and bites through the umbilical cord and the bubbles are leaked to stimulate urination and defecation and just blood flowing around the body and um, long intervals may be associated with uh, uh, give breathing, still breathe and it can be six hours and uh, even more sometimes if you want to know more about fetal period of development of dogs you can just read the text and uh, here this is about uh, maternal behavioral and caregiving behavioral, social and behavioral and poopy activity and vocalization. Of course, you just read the slide. But in uh, general, at the end of the, this practical, we said it's about uh, development of canine behavioral and complexity of early uh, environment and first have this is uh, an animal central nervous system develops its uh, genetical uh, predetermined uh, pre fu uh, function only in exposed to appropriate environmental stimulation especially early in life uh, uh, a restrict environmental early in life will result in an animal with abnormal sensory perception uh, the animal may not be able to perceive stimuli to which it was not exposed during development. And here is just early socialization and critical socialization. It's very important we talked about effect of neonatal stress. It can be just um, like a basal cortisol a concentration related to the maternal behavior and during puppy development predict post grow uh, resilience in dogs it's very important hormone uh, which controls the hypothalamus hypophysal adrenal axis and uh, it's very important in the first days of after he birth um, uh, like an increase of basal cortisol control and sensitive periods of development have this uh, all this uh, duration in a period it's just uh, in general uh, from 4 to 12 weeks of age it's very important to socialize your dogs and how we can do this here with this like in a, in a neonatal period and uh, transition period uh, here was this after two weeks and it's been feeding solid food puppies and here and something and look so uh, look for something and primary socialization period from the two uh, three weeks uh, to the six weeks and the secondary socialization period to seven to 14 weeks it's uh, the best uh, uh, time to start to training for your dog and here was this uh, juvenile period and uh, 
uh, adolescent period months to the to two uh, two years and uh, the senior period after adult and senior period it's just for different uh, kinds of dogs it's a different time uh, or large uh, size dogs start to be senior area uh, but uh, in general the senior period it is just seven years plus and here was this is uh, very important uh, days and weeks for puppy uh, like in here this is his first uh, uh, time puppy need to meet about 100 different people uh, before three months uh, uh, just in this period uh, uh, we uh, use the dog and socialization to organize uh, her behavioral in the future if you want to know more, I will give you a lot of links and uh, I use this uh, book for text of this presentation and thanks uh, this afters. Uh, okay, see you later and we will talk about feeling behavioral. Bye bye.